Whether you're a novice, a DIY expert, or a fabrication master, we all love a good hack and a tip. So here is 12 minutes of solid hacks and tips. Okay, quick one to start with. You've got a tiny little bit of metal that you want to grind up. It's a little bit too small to hold. You put it on your workbench, you go to grind it, it flicks around everywhere. Get yourself a small bit of carpet, put it on the workbench. Oh, no slidey slidey, grippy grippy. We all stack step ladders up against the wall like this. Wrong, they're designed to go flat up against the wall. You can even pull them off a bit and they'll still fall back. Now, if you've got a little bit of microboard pipe like this, it's all twisted and you want to straighten it out, get a bit of wood, drill a hole in it slightly bigger than the pipe, pull it through, that will get rid of all the worst stuff. It's also quite a good method. If you're taking it off the coil, pull it straight through, it straightens it out a little bit better. Then to get rid of the tiny bumps, get a bit of wood, lay your bit of pipe on, lay another bit of wood on it, stand on it, put as much weight as you can, wriggle it, wriggle it, back and forth until you feel it getting smooth, 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 take it out and it'll be a lot straighter. <laughs> Okay, so you want to make a cone either out of metal, paper, or whatever material you like. You need to unfold it to make a template. Now, there are various calculators online which will tell you how to draw this, and of course, if you've got a CAD program, you can do it in that. But there is a manual way too. So, we want to make a cone with a 100mm diameter at the top, 200mm diameter at the bottom, 150mm space to par. Get a 100mm circle, get a 200mm circle, screw a piece of wood in the middle so you've got your 150 apart, you've got yourself a little template of your said cone. Then, mark a start point on here, place it on a piece of paper, mark the start point, roll it round one revolution until you get back to your start again. Do this on the top and bottom cone, marking the path on the paper where it rolled. Join the two ends together, you've got your cone. But there's more. This works even if it's offset. Now this is fantastic because the online calculators cannot deal with offset cones. And even better still, you can even do differing shapes as well. Square at the top, round at the bottom. Takes a little bit of experimentation, but it still works. Job done. Now, if you've got really dirty hands and you've only got washing up liquid or a bar of soap, it doesn't quite get it all off, does it? Well, add a bit of sugar to your hands. It acts like an abrasive, dissolves fully, washes it off good, boom! Okay, so you've got a hole that you want to make bigger. Now, of course, you could just use a bigger drill bit, but if you're in plastic or thinner sheet, bigger drill bits don't always make the best of job. Now, in that scenario, you could use a step drill. They're a little bit more sympathetic to the material. But what if it's a really big hole? These things only normally go up to about 30 mil. Find a hole saw that is closest to the hole that you want to make bigger. Then if you've got one of these arbors that has a bit of thread that sticks out even when you've got a hole saw on, you can screw this one into the middle, on top of it, double stacked, you've got yourself a centering device. Stick it in there, drill it out. Oh yes. That's a dolphin, that's not right. A good tip for while surfing the web is to have a VPN. Like Surfshark, the sponsor of this video. A VPN keeps your computer and data safe while surfing by encrypting all the information sent between your device and the internet. Not only does Surfshark keep the net free from trackers, malware and phishing attempts, but now there's the option to block even more atom malware with the new Clean Web 2.0 feature. And what's more, with a Surfshark subscription, it just doesn't just cover one device. You're covered on all devices. The whole family can benefit. But best of all, it can tell the internet you are anywhere in the world. So you can stream series of things that aren't available in your country. You can book services at local rates and Surfshark works anywhere. So if you go on holiday, you can still watch the Formula One because that's what I use it for. So get Surfshark at the link in the description and use your code Colin for an extra three months free. Let's support them. They support the channel. Boom. Oh, and then guess what? I've only gone and won an award, haven't I, for best use of prop. Thank you, Mr. Shark, thank you very much. So what am I going to do next time? Have a think about that. Right, back to these workshop tips. Now, if you want to find the centre of a circle and you've got one of these tools, push it up against the side, make a couple of little marks. That is the centre of your circle. But what if you don't have one of these fine things? Well, you screw it. Get yourself a ruler, draw a line that's easily divided by two. Let's say 28. Make a line. And of course, the middle of that is 14. Get yourself a square straight edge. Put that along and against it at your mark at 14. Draw a line. Repeat a few times around the perimeter. There's the center of your circle. Fantastic method, other than the fact you've got lines all over it now. 
You know when you start a loo roll and you realise you've only got one of the two plies start to unravel? <laughs> okay, so you want to drill a hole through something, but you want to take out all of the human anomalies that we add in. Now, if you've got a pillar drill, you're sorted. But if you haven't, now, I've seen people draw lines with squares on a bit of wood, and then you use that as a guide to kind of line your drill bit up. Very nice, that's a cheap and easy way of doing it, but if you want to be flash, you get yourself one of these. These are drill bit guides, basically full of different holes, all the drill bit sizes. So you clamp it on, and of course when you drill through it, it holds the drill at 90 degrees, completely parallel to your workpiece. And as well as it working on flat bar, if you turn it round, it's V'd, so it works on tube as well. Brilliant. You're using your aerosol can, but you've run out of pressure, but you know you've still got a bit of product in there. Pull the lid off, get your air line, make the best seal you can, push it down, and pressurise it up. Put the lid back on. Oh yeah, works on WD-40 paint, any aerosol can. So, for some reason, like building a flame tube for a homemade jet engine, you want to put multiple holes round a tube equally distant spaced apart. Get yourself a piece of paper or something flexible, Wrap it around the tube where the two bits cross, make a little mark, then measure the distance from your line to the edge of the piece of the paper and then divide that by the number of holes you wish to drill. Make the marks at the appropriate position, then wrap the piece of paper back around the pipe and then mark where all your marks are and then drill them up, boom. Also, while wrapping a piece of paper around a bit of tube, as they come around to overlap, make sure them edges are perfectly parallel then you know you've got a nice straight line around the tube. <laughs> Now, if you want your tea to taste the absolute best, you need it from a Colin Furs mug. And it's very fortunate there is a sale on at the moment at thecolinfurshop.com, 30% off everything. Now, if you want to find the middle of this, but it's a funny size or your mass isn't that good, tilt your ruler till you get to a number that you do know how to divide into two, make a mark, it's still the middle. <laughs> okay, you've got two plastic tubs, you can't pull them apart. Get the airline, put it between them. <laughs> oh! Now, if you want to notch a bit of tube, and by that I mean like cut the end beautifully so it intersects perfectly with another piece of pipe, you should get yourself a tube notcher. But if you don't do a lot of tube notching, you don't want to spend the money, there is another way. Find two bits of wood as close to the diameter as your tube as possible. Fix to a board, place the tube down, and then sandwich the tube in between the two pieces of wood. Move the tube backwards slightly so it's not at the end, and then to stop it spinning, either fix with some screws or clamp down however you feel necessarily fit. Place a board on the top and mark the centre, then draw a line across this board marking that centre line. Find a hole saw the same diameter as the tube, and then drill through this top board with the hole saw close to the edge, but not on the edge. Now the point of this board is to hold the hole saw in position while we drill through the tube. And if we're drilling at 90 degrees, we kind of want to get the edges of the hole lined up to the edges of the tube. Now as we're using the same type of hole saw, that's pretty much halfway. But you can be creative. You can go off to the side if you want, or you can do partial, funny angles if your tube's intersecting in different things. You'll know what to do, you'll know where to put it. Right, let's fix it down. You might want to take the pilot bit out, it's up to you. Go. Perfectly notched pipe. There we are. Fantastic. Fits lovely. And of course, if you do it off to the side, you end up with a little recess, plonk a bit of tube in. It's just a good all round method. Now, if you want to draw a straight line on a pipe, most of us just kind of wedge our hand up against it and drag it down. It's not bad, but it ain't perfect for that. Should have a bit of angle iron on it. If you can't find your set square or you haven't got one, but you do have a saw, some saw handles, this is a set square. Now, to turn your template into cones, you get your slip roller and you offset the rear roll. So basically, you tighten one side up and slacken the other side off so it's on the wonk because this radius needs to be a lot tighter than this radius. Now, before I knew of this method, you would stick it in the slip roller, probably from the other side, but the camera's in the way. You would turn it and then I would kind of like wonk it round a bit, turn it, wonk it round a bit, turn it, wonk it round a bit. And this works all very well, but sometimes on bigger cones and thicker stuff, it's difficult. Wow! All you need to do is this! Place your template where you want to roll. Measure the distance between the template and the side of the slip roll. Cut and slot a piece of angle iron in, and then feed your template in it and watch it go to work. The template slides itself round, making for an absolutely fantastic 
even roll. And for your next passes, just close in the rear roll and repeat. And it works on all sizes of slip rolls too. Lovely. Now this method was mentioned to me in a comment when I was slip rolling on a previous video. I couldn't find anything online about it and I didn't know what it meant. And then in the next project you'll see, I was looking down and all of a sudden I just saw exactly where to put the piece of angle on and what it was gonna do and that was it. Completely changed the way I slip roll now. So if there's any other methods that you guys know that aren't in this video and you want me to include, stick them in the comments because we can all learn from it. How do you know when a square is a square? So the best way to check the squariness is to measure from corner to corner. So from this corner to this corner, two, four, six. And if it's a square, this one should be the same. Two, four, six, it's a square. And if you draw a line from corner to corner, where they cross, that's the center. Now there's a few things that will get sharpie off, like coconut oil, but like me, you probably don't have any coconut oil lying around in your workshop, but you will have a sharpie. And the best way to get sharpie off is to go over it with sharpie, and then you can rub it off. And there we go, 18 tips, some of which I knew of before, some of which I've seen online, and some of which have come from you guys. Now, if there's any other tips you know, stick them in the comments. There's got to be some old timers out there that know some absolute classic ones. And my channel members have actually given me some really good workshop tips and tool tips. If you want to become a channel member, you can influence future videos. Click the join button because they've actually named the next project, which is coming out very soon. I'm taking pizza delivery and preparation into a whole new world. Why the but I know what you're all thinking. What's happening with this? Well, by the time you're watching this, work would have started on the next phase, but fear not. The tunnel is still here. It's still going very strong. Nothing's happened. It's not collapsed. We've had no leaks. We've had no floods. We've had nothing. It is still as beautiful as it ever has been. But yes, it will start. Sorry, it's been delayed. There's been things to prepare and stuff like that, but we're on it now. Subscribe. I'll see you soon.